Hey everyone, ever find one of these out in nature? What about one of these? In this video, I'm going to show you the importance of skull identification. Being able to ID an animal skull is an important skill to have as a nature enthusiast. But to do so, we need to learn some important information. Luckily, the skulls can tell us all the information that we need to figure out what the animal is. For example, we can see if an animal is a predator, or if an animal is prey. Remember, a predator is an organism that eats another organism. Prey is the organism that a predator is eating. Alright, so here are some pecans from my yard. A squirrel comes by and the squirrel would eat the pecans. Now the pecans are the prey and the squirrel is the predator. But then a rattlesnake sees the squirrel and eats the squirrel. The rattlesnake is the predator and the squirrel is the prey. But then a coyote notices the rattlesnake and eats the snake. Now the coyote is the predator and the rattlesnake is the prey. Okay, so how do the skulls help us understand if the animal is a predator or a prey? Well, the first thing that I do when I see a skull is look at the eye sockets and the teeth. The eye sockets, also called the orbits, are where the eyes used to be. But real quick, think about where your eyes are. What direction do your eyes face? If you take your fingers and put them next to your eyes, you can see that your eyes face forward. So we are able to see very clearly what's in front of us, we can see at a pretty far distance, and we have really good depth perception, meaning that we can tell how far something is. We have two eyes, so using both eyes gives us the most power. This is called binocular vision. Bi meaning two, and ocular having to do with our eyes or vision, binocular. If we used one eye, and you know we close one eye, we would have monocular vision. Mono meaning one, and ocular having to do with our eyes or vision, monocular. But take this white-tailed deer school. Do the eyes face forward like our eyes? No, they face more toward the side. This gives the deer a much wider field of view than us humans. Why? Because a deer needs to be able to see if a predator is sneaking around it or even behind it. This wider range of vision is called peripheral vision. Peri meaning around, like in the word perimeter, so peripheral vision. So now it's time for a cheesy but effective rhyme. If the eyes are on the side, it's time to hide. If the eyes are facing front, it's time to hunt. The hiders are most likely going to be the prey, whereas the hunters are going to be your predators. So, looking at all of these skulls, we can easily see which animals are the prey, and which animals are the predators. Now we can take our investigation a little bit further by looking at the teeth. As you can see, each skull has a unique set of teeth. We have canines, which are cone-like teeth used for holding down prey, piercing, and tearing. If you take your tongue and touch the pointy tooth in your mouth, that's the canine. We also have incisors, which are in front of the canine. And incisors are used to cut and gnaw. So your front teeth, basically, the teeth that you would use to bite down something or even try to like open something, those are your incisors. We have premolars, which are right behind the canines, and those are used to tear and grind up food. So find your canine, and the two teeth right behind it, they're kind of pointy but a little flat, those are your premolars. Pre meaning before, premolars. Lastly, we have the molars, which are in the very back of the mouth. Those are flatter teeth used for breaking and grinding. So if you can, touch the back, very, very back of your teeth. Those are where the molars are. Okay, so now that you know the names of all the teeth, we're gonna go a little bit further now and talk about whether the animal is a carnivore, an omnivore, or an herbivore. 
A carnivore is an animal that eats mostly meat. Carne means meat, and it even sounds like the word carne, which is Spanish for meat, and vor means members of a group. Think coyotes, bobcats, and a red fox. An omnivore is an animal that eats both meat and plants, omni meaning all. So an animal that eats all things. So think of squirrels, pigs, possums, skunks, hey, even humans, we're omnivores. Wait, 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 wait. So squirrels, pigs, possums, and skunks eat other animals? Yes. Don't forget that insects are considered meat. Really anything that is not a plant and that does not produce its own food is considered an animal that has meat. All right, so lastly, we have herbivore, which is an animal that eats plants. Herb meaning a plant. So think deer, cows, horses, and ducks. All right, so now we're gonna put all that information together. So carnivores have all four types of teeth. They have canines, incisors, premolars, and molars, but most of the teeth are sharp. Omnivores also have all four types of teeth, canines, incisors, premolars, and molars, but the difference is that the molars are not as sharp as the molars on a carnivore. Herbivores have pretty flat teeth. They're usually missing canines, but sometimes they have really, really small canines, and there is usually a large gap between the incisors and the molars, like you see here. All right, so you can now ID if the animal is a predator or a prey, and if the animal is either a carnivore, an omnivore, or an herbivore. But now what? Well, in order to correctly identify the school, we're gonna need to start thinking like a scientist. To do that, we're going to form a hypothesis or an educated guess. So my hypothesis would be, if the school has X, Y, and Z, then it must be a blank. But what else can we look at when trying to ID a school? Well, look at the size. Is it a small school, a large school, or even a huge school? What about the shape? Is it a long school or a wide school? How can we tell if it is in the rodent family? What about, you know, the canine family? Or is it a reptile? Look for the ear canals, the auditory bullae, the foramen magnum, the rostrum, the mandible, the zygomatic arch, or the sagittal crest. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. What the heck are you talking about? What I'm trying to say is that you need to look at every part of the school. Take notes and notice how everything is working together. All right, so remember, every part of the school has a different job and each job can tell us a story about what the animal is. However, don't be discouraged if you don't know every single part of the school. That's okay, that's not the point of this. The point of this is to be able to explore nature, think like a scientist, and take something that's unknown and do your best to try to figure out the answer. So go out and explore, have fun, stay safe, and stay positive. Have you ever found an animal school while you were out there exploring? Please let me know in the comments, I'm actually really curious to hear. Also, if you're an educator and would like to check out all of these schools for hands-on learning, please look in the description below. Take care.